Um, you know, from, from my own standpoint, I, I walked out of my day job as an environmental engineer at the end of 1996. And I was already pretty determined that my career was going to be um, different in that I didn't want to try to follow a path that took me away from the people who are the consumers, the supporters, you know, to have that direct interaction. And at that point, you know, people thought that I was, a, you know, sort of a high tech genius because I could use email, you know, <laughs> and, and the internet reasonably, you know, in an advanced way to, to communicate that and to keep people coming and to tell the stories that I was collecting along the way. And I think for, for me, social media just was something that it's like, oh, man, I'm so glad that there's a way to do this a little more conveniently and to allow the people who want to participate in your activities on a more frequent basis than the, one, the once a month email that goes out to the you know, thousand, couple thousand people on my email list. You know, the Facebook and Twitter and all of that is really a way for them to stay as connected as they want to. Yeah. And that's really what it comes down to is what, do, what matters to you, the person. If I write a song that moves you in some way, I'm honored by that. But I'm not going to assume that, you know, five albums worth of songs are going to all move you the same way. But the fact that we connected for that period of time, that moment, that moment in your life where I provided the soundtrack for a little while. You know, that's, that's really what social media makes possible, is for people to say, this mattered to me now, and all of their friends see it too. It's, it's an odd kind of way to look at the world, and it certainly is, is so out of sorts with what the traditional music business mm -hmm. has been, but I think Scott can certainly testify to the fact that you, you make a lot of really good connections with people, some of whom you get to meet in person, others whom just help you feel like, okay, that's pretty cool. It's just a little extra motivation going into your daily grind of stuff that, you know, there's people out there who care about that, what yeah, we're doing exactly. and how You're we're doing it. You're not just putting it out and people aren't coming, that actually people are paying right. attention and, and listening. So let's, uh, I want to finish up here talking about the ride because this is available in the ABC stores in Virginia. It is, it is. And for your, for your larger internet audience, um, we also sell this now in uh, Washington, D.C., in District of Columbia, in uh, Maryland, Baltimore, Frederick, surrounding areas, all through Maryland. Um, and, and in fact, we just opened up a, a new market in Northern California around Sacramento and Lake Tahoe. And uh, uh, it's, it's interesting, that area up there uh, is a lot like Loudoun County. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's, a, it's a, a more affluent community, people who can afford a higher and sort of organic craft spirit. Um, and they appreciate, you know, a, a finer beverage like that. So it was a good market for us and we were thrilled to get it. And but people should come here yes. and get it because there's so much here to see and do and so much to visit. And Except and, for it's not available at the local ABC store. They're sold out. It, yeah. is, it is from time to time. We're working with them to get their ordering better. So yeah. Price of success. Yes, that's a, unfortunately it does sell out. Which is it's something that we, we, we want to be honest about and talk about is that when you go into a store to actually purchase this, looking at it, it this is approximately $40, which... When you look at it, there could be some sticker shock, um, but there's there's many factors you have to look at. It. First of all, there's all the organic ingredients that we just talked about that go into it. It's a handcrafted at a micro distillery, so that so they obviously made it. Yeah. So they obviously don't have the economies of scale where they have these huge tanks and fermenting and they can just throw everything in and, and cut the price down. Um, the other thing is that we, uh, fact that we just learned is um, the state takes 50% off the top. So we have a $40 bottle. The state immediately takes $20. We have $20 that goes back to Scott, who then has to pay the federal taxes, has to pay ingredients, ingredients supplies, and everything products. else. Yeah, it, um, it, it, uh, it, it's, it's a tough business to be in. And, and uh, you know, in, in Virginia, Virginia controls the entire distribution through the retail side of it. So they take all those profits that would otherwise have gone to distributors and retail stores and all of that. Mm -hmm. So in the end, like you said, they get 50% of every bottle we sell. Uh, so it is, a, it is a tough business. The margins are not there. So we're not doing it to get rich. We're doing it because we love doing this, and it's a lot of fun. And the other way I like to look at it is that you can go to Torero Winery, spend $40 on a bottle of wine that you're going to finish in two hours. You come here, buy a $40 bottle of rye whiskey, <laughs> and that's going to last you two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Right. I mean, that's right. that's going to be with you for a while. 
Yeah, that is an important point. You don't drink it quite as fast as you would a wine. We hope not. Um, and, you don't uh, want to finish that in two hours. <laughs> but uh, unless you've got a great group of friends around. Yeah, so, but uh, uh, it does last a bit longer. So, so the, uh, the brandy that you're working with now, mm -hmm. when and how long till that's good? So, so brandy is interesting. Again, more federal laws. Um, the federal law on brandy, grape brandy, and it only applies to grape brandy, is that uh, it has to be aged for a minimum of two years. And if you don't age it for a minimum of two years, you have to call it immature brandy. And of course, nobody would buy such a thing right. as that. So, so we, we uh, the brandy, we will uh, distill it. Uh, we've just begun, the season has just started. Um, that'll be put away um, shortly. You know, by the end of, say, November, we'll be done with all of our brandy production. We'll put that away and say goodnight to it for two years and then come back and see it in a couple of years, see how it turned out. Uh, so it's a little bit of patience. I'm, I'm learning patience in this business, exactly. which is something and, and that's what about. we got into in the introduction. How mm -hmm. basically government re regulations reflect what they, how they produce things. So, mm -hmm. so what we will do is we'll come back here in two years. We'll, <laughs> we'll see how the great uh, the brandy came out. We'll have see how Andrew's new CD uh, it worked in that time and what he's doing. And maybe we'll share a glass of brandy over the whole yeah, discussion. Yeah, absolutely. So, good. so cheers and thank cheers. you very much. Salud. And. Stay tuned for a performance from Andrew McKnight, and we'll see you next time on MyJube TV. Thanks for watching. Dear Colonel Mosby, please, sir, a moment of your time. I know it's strange. Yeah.